Hello everyone, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and welcome to the 24 hour readathon, readathon edition, which is a 24 hour readathon hosted by Jade at January Reads. Now, I thought I had an intro for this vlog, which technically has already happened. I don't know what happened to it, but when editing, I realized I didn't have an intro. So, hello, hello, hello. I'm going to talk like the readathon hasn't happened, but it's happened a little while ago now. So, all you need to know is that I am attempting to stay up for the max maximum amount of time I can in the next 24 hours of that video and read books. And there are no specific prompts to this readathon just to read. This is my TBR, so let me go through it. We have one middle grade book which I chose to be on here because of Jade, which is Potkin and Stubbs by Sophie Green. This is the first book in the series. It follows a main character named Little Potkin who wants to be a reporter. She wants to tell the truth and she really um, looks up to this journal newspaper that goes around and actually tells the truth about what is going on in her town. She meets this boy here who is Stubbs and he's a ghost and he wants to know what happened to him because he does not remember. Then uh, we have two books in the Frisky Business series by Kendall Ryan. This is an adult romance series about a bunch of men who own an adult toy shop together and essentially we follow each of the men in the toy shop and their love interest. The, the boyfriend effect is a brother's best friend romance. The second one follows the brother of the other book and he's kind of like a grump, very shy, and then we follow his romance. I already read the third book in March which was The Stun Next Door and I'm kind of reversing back and reading the rest of the series and the last book on my TBR which as I mentioned throughout the video is more of a if I have time I wish I could start and that is Good Girl Bad Blood because I read the first book in this series during Becca's 40 out 48 hour book -alpathon. This is an uh, why was I gonna say adult? This is a young adult mystery novel and this follows the re like repercussions of what happens in a good, good a good girl's guide to murder. I binged that first book, absolutely loved it, and if at all possible I would like to start this one during the 24 hour readathon. So that's it. We will flash back to the actual 24 hour readathon. Hope you guys enjoy and thank you for clicking on this video. Not me thinking I pressed record when I had it. Okay, um, the readathon is gonna start. I had the most lovely dinner, this amazing garlic bread loaf. I've, it was just absolutely amazing. I have a cookie left over for later on. But I was kind of debating how I wanted to split up my TBR because this is not like the most realistic for me. I don't usually read or I cap at about 1,000 pages in 24 hours when I do sleep. Um, I don't know if I'm planning on sleeping or not, honestly. We'll just see where the night takes us. But the total for these four books would be 1,361 pages, which is a lot. However, the text is bigger in like three of these books. What I do think I'm going to do is that I'm going to end up keeping Good Girls, uh, Good Girl Bad Blood for last because I don't mind as much bringing this into my like next week of reading. I loved the first book. I think I mentioned I read it for Becca's book -alpathon. and I know I'm gonna get spooked if I read this at night so I prefer to keep it for the afternoon tomorrow and just kind of take my time with it and enjoy it and not binge it too fast because then I'll have to wait for the third book. Um, and I know the desperation I felt when I finished the first book and I didn't own the second one. This was actually gifted to me by one of my friends, which thanks again. I, I don't know if you'd be watching this, but thank you if you are. Um, so yes, I think I'm going to keep this for last. And then I was kind of debating whether I would want to read my middle grade first. And I specifically picked this one because of Jade. Or if I wanted to start with a romance. And then I realized I should probably start with a romance and then break up my reading 
with Putkin and Stubbs and go back to the same series afterwards in the romance genre because if I didn't mention already these two are part of the same series um, and so I thought it would be easier to like not get bored of a specific genre even though I don't really get bored of romance but like break up romance middle grade and then go back to romance and they're that way there's a little bit more content. If I only get to two books, at least it's two books from two different genres, which may be a little bit more entertaining than, you know, just two kind of easygoing, somewhat smutty romances. So that's the game plan. This is what I'm going to go with first. I'm going to try to find some reading sprints and kind of figure out my evening that way. But yes, I'll update you guys when I have more. I do need to go cha charge my camera. Hello, my battery is fully charged. It is 9.50 and I have officially finished my first book for the Readathon, so one down in like two and a half hours-ish. I did put it through Call Pile already, which is the rating system I use, which was created by Gia Book Roast, and this ended up getting a very high four stars. This is definitely my favorite Kendall Ryan book I have read so far. I absolutely loved the hero and the main female protagonist. Oh my god, I loved her so much. She's a social worker, she has a lot of the same personality traits I do, and I highly connect with her, her feelings, her thought process, her care. Um, she works in an elderly home, I work in an elderly home, I'm not working there as a social worker, but I still have a lot of the same feelings towards the elderly. And in this plot, I feel like there was a lot more to the story than just the romance, which felt nice, but the romance was absolutely mind-boggling, and I'm realizing, like, the forbidden kind of romance where this was, um, the brother's best friend romance. Completely loved it, and I'm discovering so many things in Kendall Ryan's romances, like the single dad romances. Learned it was a trope I love by reading this book. Not this book, but another one of Kendall Ryan's books. And this one was no exception. Absolutely loved it. Definitely the one I would recommend most as of now. And I cannot wait to get into the second book in the series because it follows another one of the boys and like another one of the pairings. And I can't wait to see the dynamic of that one. And I'm just very excited again ever since my friend mentioned the... I don't, yeah, I talked about this more in my weekly reading vlog, but I did get teased by one of my friends that, um, I read a lot of books with, like, naked guys on the cover, and now I can't stop being self-conscious about that, but you know what? It's fine, I don't read them in public, but anyways, this was a blast. And one book down, and now I'm going to pick up Potkin and Stubbs by Sophie Green, which is the first book in the middle grade series, and this is, like... A young girl who wants to be a reporter and her friend, I don't know if the friend who helps her is a ghost, I don't really know, but this is the next book I'm going to pick up and honestly I'm picking this specific middle grade because of Jade. I feel like I was introduced to this on her channel and Gavin also read and enjoyed this I believe. Uh, so yes, I wanted to read a middle grade for this readathon, so this is the one I'm going to be reading now. I don't know if I could manage this one before I go to bed. That's wishful thinking, but if I could read two books tonight, then sleep, and go back and read like a book and a half tomorrow, that would be fantastic. So yes, I do want to say that this book really did grab my attention and I read it in one sitting so much that I was forcing myself to finish this book before using the washroom so I'm gonna do that now and then we're hopping on to the middle grade train switching gears a little bit and yeah
Hello, I look insane. The lighting is terrible, but I'm trying with just a little lamp to have enough light in my face to kind of update you guys. Um, I just finished the Instagram live sprints with Jade and Gavin, which were pretty hilarious. And it wasn't like a super long time, but I am now 57 pages into Potkin and Stubbs. It's all right. I'm not sure how I'm feeling about it yet. It's not an exceptional middle grade. It didn't like grab me from the first page like Amari or Nevermore or the Mystery of Black Hall the Lane had. Um, but it is not bad. I think because it's starting to be late. What time is it? It's 11:30 right now. Ideally, um, you know how I said I was gonna read two books before I went to bed. That's a lie. What I think I would like to happen is read till page 100 and see how I feel about this and then I might switch off reading for a little while and watch a Big Bang Theory and fall asleep and then wake up early tomorrow in the morning and keep reading. Ideally I'd like to finish this book, the next Kendall Ryan book, and start on Good Girl Bad Blood if I have time. Um, because I really don't want to rush that one. But yeah, I really don't know if I'm going to end up enjoying this. Really what it is about, I wasn't sure if the friend was a ghost. I think I mentioned that before. We follow um, little, little Potkin who wants to be a, like, investigator, write for the news, and like write about real things, not like have to be filtered. And there's this like underground newspaper which she looks up to. And she's trying to find something to write about and she ends up meeting this boy who's like, the, it's literally the tagline of the book. It says, I have a story for you. It's a missing persons cases. And you find out that the boy is actually a ghost. He doesn't remember who he is, his name or anything. And then our main character is going to go on a journey and I guess help solve the mystery of his origin and kind of like who he was and what happened to him. She suspects a murder. I don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully it's enjoyable. Crossing my fingers. So I'm going to go read a little bit more and update you guys probably in the morning. Guess who thought was recording again, but wasn't me. Hello, it is the next day. It's 11.30, so good morning. I just finished my last workout of the week and my mindfulness. I have this little challenge going on for myself, so that is done and out of the way. Um, usually my mindfulness really does set a tone for the day, but today I'm kind of scatterbrained, but it's okay. I did read some more this morning. I did not catch Jade's live because I got up much later than I should have, but I think my body just needed it, so I let myself sleep in. And I'm now 150 pages through Potkin and Stubbs. I did manage to get to page 100 yesterday. I read 50 more pages this morning, which means I am now 40% of the way through this book. I'm liking it, but not loving it. I don't connect to the main character as much as I do in other middle grade books, like Amari or Morgan. Um, and the ghost friend in this, I don't like as much as other ghost friends we've encountered. Like, for example, Jacob from the Cassidy Blake series by Victoria Schwab. I was immediately attached to him and didn't want anything to happen. However, I don't really care for him. I do care a little bit about the mystery of what happened to him and why his case was essentially just closed by this private investigator who was now part of the story. But I don't feel like the stakes are really high. I feel like, not that her main character isn't likable, I don't think that's it, but I just don't feel any connection to her. And there's some things in this book that I don't really think are appropriate for a middle grade book. Like the private investigator who Potkin, little Potkin, starts kind of working with goes to get his car back because it was like brought because he wouldn't, I, I don't know, I think there were payment issues or whatever. And he tells her main character, it's not really stealing if you're taking back something that's yours. And I don't know, having messages and books like that from nine to 12 year olds, like maybe not the best idea. I don't think it's a 
lesson anyone should learn really if you're not able to afford things or if you can't pay for things they're not really yours but that's just like some little things here and there that are bugging me a little bit and I'm not like fully invested in anything the atmosphere isn't so bad but I feel like the logic in here is a big zero and there's just I don't know I'm not loving it I don't think I would counting you on with the series as of now and I think it also explains why I'm reading so slowly because at this point in a 24 hour readathon I would have read a lot more but it's not grabbing me like the Kendall Ryan book did which I know they're completely different books but with Kendall Ryan's book I was I sat on my butt and read and didn't even want to get up to go to the washroom before I was done the book and with this one I'm kind of like eh whatever like it's a book knocked off my TBR and that's kind of just it. However moving on I have some parcels here that I got um, because two weeks ago now was my birthday and my birthday present that I, I got were mostly like money and gift cards so they've been trickling in and I thought I would have like a little unboxing segment on camera with you guys so let's begin. First box from Amazon. First book, ooh, I like this cover. First book in this box is Snap by Alexa Martin, which is the fourth and I think final book. Um, I don't even know what the series is called, but it is like a series that is all about women who date men in the NFL and they're all part of the same team called the Mustangs. The first one is Intercepted. The second one I read for Becca's Begobbleton, which was fumbled and I have blitz and this one was heavily discounted it was more than 50% off so I snatched myself a copy because I really enjoyed the beginning of the series so I wanted to like finish off my collection and another book I got because it was very discounted and it did make my list of most anticipated YA books was the meet cute project by Rhiannon Richardson this is a YA book I don't read as much YA but I'm I really do think I'm going to like this one and also this is from an author of color with characters of color as well and I think it's important to like show your support and this is about what is it about already yes this is about Mia whose sister is kind of like going like a bridezilla and is supposed to get married and our main character is looking for a date to bring to the wedding she doesn't think that romance and rom-coms are all the thing she thinks are very unrealistic but her friends really love them and I think they set her up on a bunch of little meet cute dates and she ends up falling in love which is very very sweet and it's also kind of funny because a meet cute is usually not arranged so we'll see how it goes but I think I'm really going to enjoy this one and yes so two first books here love that for me very excited for both of them then we have a package from Indigo, which doesn't have a pull tab. Let me just... Oh, I'm so excited! Okay, okay. I finally have a copy of The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which has made the rounds on Booktube, TikTok, Bookstagram, and... I'll be honest, I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes. If you followed me from the very beginning of my channel, which I don't think a lot of you have, I had created this book review for The Naturals, which was another series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which I completely fell in love with, and it's one of my favorite series to date. It follows a bunch of young children, well, teens, with very um, interesting abilities and they help solve cold cases and a lot of like drama happens and it's kind of like CSI FBI feels but with like teenagers and was super interesting and ever since then I've wanted to find more books by Jennifer Lynn Barnes that gave me a similar feeling not with the same plot obviously but just the same gripping feeling and I really think that this one will do it However, the hardcover of this was impossible to find for months on end here in Canada. 
Chapters had it out of stock. Amazon was out of stock. Everywhere I looked, it was insane. This book, I don't know what happened, but everybody jumped on the Jennifer Lynn Barnes trains, and I was like, mm, like, wh where do I get a copy? And I finally found one on Chapters. This is a lot, uh, has been pitched a lot like um, Knives Out with teenagers and it's like this girl who inherits a bunch of money and she doesn't know why and then there's all of the boys who the money I guess was supposed to go to and there's like some romance in there. It's a lot of different things. So I am very excited. Uh, this should be on my TBR for the month when I do get around to filming it. And then the last thing in here comes in an unbox unrealistically big box, but it's not a book. Let, let me show you guys. They really wrap this up like, they, I don't know why, they were shipping glass or whatever. Not that I'm complaining, but oh my god. So, what I got is a book sleeve. It says, don't hurry, be happy. <laughs> And it has two of my favorite animals. If you don't know, I am literally obsessed with alpacas. And if you didn't notice, my, PJ, my PJs are like llamas and alpacas. I have an alpaca teddy bear I sleep with because yes, I'm that, that bitch. And this was on sale and I also had a $5 coupon from Chapters, so I treated myself to this book sleeve because I've been eyeing it for ages. I just didn't want to pay $25 for a book sleeve. So I got a book sleeve and it's really fun because it's magnetic on the inside. And I am very excited for all of these, so yay! Book haul! of a lot of different kind of books and I'm all excited for I'm excited for all of them so happy birthday to me and I really need to keep reading I also need to make some food so peace hello I'm still in my workout clothes I need to get ready for the day I also technically need to film videos today. I am so behind on life. But I just wanted to say I did finish Potkin and Stubbs. Put it through a call pile. It got a very, very low three stars. Um, it was fine. I'm not going to continue on with the series. The mystery got a little better by the end. But again, did not care for any of it, I think. It was fine. I know a lot of people enjoy it, so I think I'm in the minority here, but the writing style was okay. I think the atmosphere was definitely dark and kind of noir, which a lot of people will love. I just think it was almost overdone, and I did not specifically love the characters or the mystery, so a low three stars. There's nothing wrong with it. I know it's a lot of people's, like, favorite middle grade or middle grade they really enjoy. It's just not hitting the chord for me. Hitting the chord? Striking a chord? Striking a chord, whatever this I'm trying to say. I'm a mess. It is 2.30 so I'm very slow today but it's okay. I am still enjoying myself so I do have two books down. Let, let us have a page count for a minute here. So I've read over 650 pages with these two combined, which honestly, not that bad. I'm two books in for April already, which I love that for me. However, that means I still have, let me, this one that I wanted to read entirely and then this one that I wanted to make a dent in. I don't really know how the rest of the day is going to go. I'm also like realizing that I'm in this like mindset where I want to collect all of Kendall Ryan's books and I have this one left physically and only two more on my Kindle and now I'm like I don't want to read this because then I won't have any more on my physical shelves and I don't I don't know what's going on in my head but that's kind of how I feel so who knows how the rest of the day will go. I might run a bath or eat a snack or something and then keep on reading. This really took a lot of energy out of me and now I'm in a weird headspace. This will be unhauled. It sucks because the illustrations on the cover, gorgeous, but 
it was not for me and now I'm kind of in a reading slump. So, I don't know. I'll catch you guys up when I make up my mind on what's going to happen with the rest of my reading. Hello friends! I'm the same spot as the intro because I never did an outro to this video because as you can see throughout the video, even though I did really enjoy my time and I still read two books, which for some people is a lot, for some people is very little, I felt a little bit discouraged and I also had a lot of other things to do and I needed to film videos and so, so what ended up happening is that instead of continuing and trying to fit in another book for this readathon, I decided to go ahead and film some videos to kind of manage my time a little bit better. So, I did only complete the two books I talked about, which were The Boyfriend Effect and Potkin and Stubbs. I do honestly think that Potkin and Stubbs really did put me kind of in a downward mood where I didn't really feel like reading anymore because I didn't really love my time reading this one. I also very much feared that after I read this, I wouldn't have any more Kendall Ryan on my bookshelf. Since then, however, I have acquired more of her books because I have reached a few book bingos and so I allowed myself to purchase two of her other books and now I feel complete and I will proceed to read this hopefully very soon because it is on my April TBRs. So I just wanted to kind of round this out and tell you guys again, absolutely love this one. Four out of five stars, a very high four stars and this one I think I, I did a good job of explaining kind of what bothered me and it's a low three stars, really more of a 2.5 in my opinion. So overall it was a good readathon. I think it definitely put me in a reading kick because afterwards I've been reading like a lot more books. So I'm thankful for that and I had overall a great time. So thank you again to Jade for hosting this readathon. I hope you guys enjoyed following me on my reading journey. I should be making more of these 24 hour readathons like vlog style things soon because school should be out and yes let me know if you participated in like your own 24 hour readathon recently or if you did participate in readathon. How did it go? And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye guys!